on the farm here today. There's a lot going on. Just get just getting here from my day job, and uh, it's Friday, uh, May the 14th. Grass is starting to grow, and uh, a little bit, uh, a little more happy with uh, the growth right now than I was even a week ago. Uh, it's still kind of dry. We've got uh, a little bit of rain coming up next week. I may even start over the weekend a little bit. I don't know what it's going to amount to. But at this point, we'll take what we can get. Got several, got several things on my plate here this evening. Uh, one of them is to change oil in the John Deere 5055. I do not have time to clean the bird poop off of the hood. But I'd like to. No snakes. So while the oil's draining, I'm going to go get the uh, Massey 1105. I can drive over to my barn, but I like to walk and uh, get in as much walking as I can. I mowed this center out so grass this tall wouldn't be rubbing on the bottom of the car when I do drive over. And... Uh, it's really making the growth uh, coming back. I've seen a fair number of people uh, cutting hay this past week. We haven't had rain all week. It's just been really cold. And uh, uh, one day this week we had frost. I could cut this now and uh, take it on the maturity of uh, the uh, orchard grass and fescue that have grown in. Uh, but uh, I think with the weather that they're calling for next week with the rain uh this what what you don't see here is a, there's an enormous amount of timothy uh that's coming through and uh so it may be that we wind up cutting to the uh, maturity of the timothy so We'll see. For us, it's a win-win either way. We're going to get some pretty nice hay off this field and our other fields, too. Most all of the hay that I've seen cut uh, is being chopped into silage. And uh, I know of one guy that uh, cut for square bales in uh, northern Virginia. And he got about half the yield. And it has been uh, uh, dry. And even though this looks impressive, it's not where it was last year with the rain that we had, but it's doing pretty good. I'm pleased with what I'm seeing. I've been lubing up my uh, quick attach where it engages the uh, pins here, and uh, they're pretty limbered up. I need to put that on the back of the Massey Ferguson. I'll probably get to that this weekend, I think. Before I go driving off, I try to round up the mouse poison. Massey Ferguson key. I don't want to. I don't want to jinx anything, but it's amazing to me. As long as that tractor sets and as old as it is, it just cranks up on idle. First crank. I like to. Let the engines warm up a little bit before I uh, take off and do anything with them. This little 
field right here if it looks uh, kind of brown uh, I've hit it with some herbicide and I'm gonna hit it with some roundup on top of that and uh, these two piles right here I'm um, gonna we'll try to burn those here maybe even this weekend I'm not sure and then I'm gonna disc it up and put it in some teff grass and there's a possibility I might put some teff back over the hill on that field uh, where I showed the new road in one of my videos I might put a little bit up there depends on how much I got This little drive will kind of get this tractor warmed up so I can change the oil. Get a little better shot of the fields from up here and you know uh, it won't be too long and we'll be running my chrome more conditioner through this field. I have to tell you uh, after pretty much setting all winter there's a great temptation on my part to gun the engine and just take off down through here, but uh, I just kind of take it easy. I'm not interested in abusing my equipment, especially not this tractor. I'm in uh, high range, first gear, multi-power load. And when I go down this hill, I'll have to use the brake because in multi-power low, you don't have engine hold back. But that's okay. Changing oil. I'm thinking about changing the antifreeze too. I uh, haven't decided on that yet, but uh, certainly uh, we're going to give the oil a uh, change. A couple of filter wrenches and paper towels. Misplaced my filter. That ate up about 15 or 20 minutes. So the old filter's off. I'm kind of letting it drain into that uh, pan. And I've got my uh, John Deere filter here that I found after momentarily losing it. And uh, I know some people are going to ask or are thinking, why are you using John Deere oil? and John Deere filters and uh, on a John Deere tractor and it's not because it's John Deere uh, necessarily but uh, uh, I've had some experience in the past uh, engineering uh, diesel electric generators for military applications and we used John Deere engines in them <clears throat> and uh, and we had really good luck and we were impressed upon by the John Deere uh outfit that sold us the the john deere engines and uh, about the merits of john deere oil and john deere filters now i get it you know if you look at the ratings uh another oil is probably just as good but all i can say is is these generators that we put together uh they saw severe use in afghanistan and iraq uh and the, you know they would it was it was common for those generators to go 10,000 hours using John Deere filters and John Deere oil. So since I bought this tractor new, I just kind of like to baby it a little bit. The Massey back there, 
I use Valvoline, not Valvoline, uh, um, I'll have to look at it. I can't remember uh, one thought to the next, but in any way, in any event, I use an Agco filter, but I use a, 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 a brand name oil that's not Agco or Massey Ferguson, but on this John Deere, uh, I'm going to stick with John Deere stuff, and uh, that's just me. The oil filter's on, the drain plug's in and snug down. I need to wipe that down. The drain plug, uh, the drain plug, the fill is right behind this panel. Let's see if I can get this hood open. I have a video called John Deere Easy Oil Change. And uh, where I, I show the complete oil change on this, on, on the video. But right there's the... Uh, the feel. But before I do that, I want to let the big Massey uh, start draining. So the drain, the drain plug on this uh, 1105 is on the opposite side of the oil filter and it's just right here on the side of the block. Uh, easy enough to get to. So what I do is I, I try to catch a little bit of oil in this uh, bucket right here that I used on the John Deere. And uh, this uh, Massey holds four gallons and one quart of fuel with the filter. So uh, instead of letting the, you know, the the buckets get all the way to the top, so when I carry them, there's potential for the oil to splash and uh, over the sides. I just put a little a little more oil into that. And uh, this tractor actually did pretty good last year. It really didn't use, uh, if it used any oil at all, it was min, it was minuscule. I did not have to add oil. Let me put it to you that way. And again, there's a video uh, on our YouTube channel, Easy Oil Change on the Massey Ferguson 1105. And uh, I haven't quite mastered putting links uh, maybe that's something I'll get to one of these days, but uh, trust me, there is an easy oil change video for this Massey and the John Deere. So while while that finishes draining, uh, I'll finish putting oil in the John Deere out here. So if the uh, Massey Ferguson down there, <clears throat> 1105, holds four gallons and one quart, uh, this uh, John Deere holds uh, two gallons and one quart. And what I do is I just uh, uh, buy a quart when I buy my oil. And this is the first that I pour in. And then when I'm done with it, I'll take it down and fill it up one quart exactly uh, with the oil I'm using on the Massey Ferguson. And then I know I got the right amount. I'm sure there are easier ways, but that's just the way I do it. So the John Deere's uh, full of oil, and uh, I am going to change the radiator fluid. Uh, probably do that this weekend, and I'm going to change the transmission oil filter and, and all the transmission oil. Uh, that one will be a separate video, but uh, from an oil change standpoint, uh, the John Deere is ready to go for 2021 haying. Hopefully, I don't break anything, but uh, this little clamp right here on this air filter uh, cap is rusted really, really bad. I tried to find one, and uh, I believe it's Donaldson, but it appears you have to buy the whole filter, this whole filter assembly that comes with the cap it comes with these things and I don't want to do that if anybody knows where I can get these little clips they just snap in here uh, there's nothing rocket science about them but uh, anyway I've got air filters and while I'm here on this oil change I'm gonna go ahead and change these air filters and pray I don't break that thing right there you can't know how gentle I work this thing loose you would think that this was a, a a bomb or something, and that was a fuse, but I don't want to break it. So there's a filter 
inside a filter. I think that thing just comes out, and it does. You can see it's kind of dirty. It's it's time for a change. Again, I don't mind spending a little money on maintenance. Cheaper than buying another tractor. So, right there again is the old filter. And it probably had some hours left in it, but there's the new one. And then the old uh, inside filter. And, you know, the new one. So, maybe this thing will breathe a little better in the hay fields. All right, I got the new filters in place and the old ones right here. And, uh, I managed to break that again. If anybody knows where I can find some of these clips and order them just to clip, uh, I'd be much obliged if you'd put something in the comments. It's about to get dark on me. You know, this is one of these days, every now and then, probably more often than not, if the truth be told. But uh, uh, I get on this farm and I put in a lot of time, but sometimes I don't get a lot of work done. And uh, about to get dark on me. I need to wipe this drain plug off, put the plug back in, and then go to the other side and deal with the filter and uh, fill this thing back up. So last year when I changed the uh, filter on this tractor, and for those that are new to the channel, uh, this is the third year that I've had this uh, Massey 1105. Uh, when I got it, all the fluids had been changed. I didn't have to do any oil changes. And then the second year, I did an oil change. But uh, to my surprise, when I cracked this filter loose uh, last year, not a single drop came out of the filter and down into the pan. But I think it just drains back. But uh, see what it's like this year. Broke, so I got it broke loose. And a pan down there just in case. And I see a little bit coming out. That may where I be where I jiggled it some, but just a little bit, but not like a you know, not like a full filter. And this is a big filter compared to my John Deere. So, uh, that's pretty good. One less mess to contend with. I can just get that thing to sit there and not flip over. Got the filter back on and uh, wiped up some oil. It just kind of trickled down uh, right here. I really wasn't expecting any, but when I changed it the last time, I think it had been sitting uh, a little longer than what it was today. But uh, in any event, uh, right here is where you put the, the uh, oil in and the dipstick threads into the top of it. I'll get that off and uh, fill it up. I need to wipe that a little bit more. I'll do that tomorrow when I've got more daylight. Mobile, mobile Delvac is what I'm using on the uh, 1105, and I also use it on the uh, Model 50, uh, Massey Ferguson, 15W40, and uh, I'm using 15W40 on John Deere out there too. Uh, this is conventional oil. I don't use synthetics. Uh, this is conventional oil, uh, and same with the John Deere uh, 15W40. Uh, so it's getting really dark now, uh, but I did finish the oil filter uh, change and the oil change on the 1105, and of course I finished the John Deere out there. You probably can't see anything, but uh, I'm going to call it a night, and uh, you know, I come up here and I work after, after hours, and uh, sometimes uh, I only have a 
a few hours to work, sometimes less than that, sometimes more. And uh, I didn't get on the farm as early as I wanted to. But uh, nonetheless, uh, I had a productive day. And that's kind of what I look for is uh, I call them like, you know, little victories. So if I can just accomplish one thing, you know, it's worth the time spent uh, here on this farm. And even though I probably put in a lot of time today, and maybe by some standards I didn't get a lot of work done, but I did get an oil change in two tractors and air, air filter change. So uh, I'll kind of reconvene tomorrow and uh, continue in preparation for haying. So appreciate you watching, and we'll talk to you later.